Dive into God's Word. Dig a little deeper. Discover the Bible's message for you today. Pathway to Paradise Ministries presents Deeper, your daily Bible study with Dr. Tim Rumsey and Pastor David Salazar. Hello and thank you for joining us today, whether it is uh, morning or the middle of the day or perhaps late at night and you're about to go to bed and this is the last thing that you are doing today. Thanks for joining us. And uh, it's always a blessing for me uh, to study with you, even though we can't see each other. And admittedly, the conversation is a little bit one-sided in this format. Uh, I still appreciate uh, the fact that um, we can study together and invite you to give us feedback. We'd love to hear from you, whether it's on our Facebook page at Pathway to Paradise there on Facebook. You can find us on YouTube, again, just Pathway to Paradise Ministries. Of course, there is our website as well, pathwaytoparadise.org. Uh, would love to hear feedback from you, your thoughts on the lesson, uh, maybe questions that are left hanging after uh, I haven't explained something the way it was sounding in my mind, um, or just to say hi. would love to hear from you. Uh, you can also um, email me at tim at pathwaytoparadise.org. And um, again, would love to hear from you in that format as well. Well, let's start with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, as we continue studying through Daniel chapter 4, um, let us learn the lesson that Nebuchadnezzar learned. Um, as we've prayed before, Lord, we want to learn it more quickly than he did, and uh, hopefully with less pain than he probably went through. But Lord, uh, whatever it takes should be our prayer. And so we ask today that you'll do whatever it takes in our lives today to bring us a little bit closer to you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. A major theme in the book of Daniel is that God rules in heaven. In Daniel 2, the image of the metal man is destroyed when God's stone kingdom strikes it, and then that stone fills the entire earth. In Daniel chapter 3, Nebuchadnezzar's murderous plot to kill Daniel's three friends is overruled when Christ walks in the fire with them. In Daniel chapter 4, God humbles the proud pagan monarch. In Daniel chapter 5, a divine messenger signals the end of Babylon's dominion. In Daniel chapter 6, God again overrules a murderous plot to destroy his servants. That, of course, is the infamous story of Daniel in the lion's den. And then in Daniel chapter 7, God's judgment stops and then destroys the little horn's efforts to attack God and the saints. However, God's involvement and work among humanity and throughout history, must at some point become personal for each one of us. In other words, as we look uh, through these prophecies and stories in Daniel, we, we're we given a glimpse of God's work in humanity through these vast epics of time, you know, entire empires that each one lasts several hundred years, or in the case of Rome, over a thousand years. And we cannot lose sight of the fact that all of this God has given to us so that I personally, so that you personally can uh, come to the place where we allow God to work in our lives the way he wants to. This was the le- lesson that Nebuchadnezzar still had to learn, just like you know, so many of us, that the God of heaven wanted a personal relationship with him and that he had to personally surrender himself to the power of this God, his creator. Um, in Daniel 2, Nebuchadnezzar had gotten a glimpse that God is powerful, that he exists, that he you know, controls these movements uh, throughout history of empires, but it wasn't personal uh, like it became in Daniel chapter 4. And so we're really on the same journey that uh, God had Nebuchadnezzar on. And again, our prayer should be that we can learn more quickly and more easily than Nebuchadnezzar learned his lessons. Let's go to Daniel chapter 4, and we're going to read verse 17 and verse 26, and then we'll comment on those. Verse 17 says, this matter, uh, Daniel is explaining the vision to him, and he says, this matter is by the decree of the watchers and the demand by the word of the holy ones to the intent that the living may know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he will and setteth up over it the basest of men. That may not have been the <laughs> the highest compliment 
that Daniel could have given to Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, not sure there if Daniel is is indicating that Nebuchadnezzar was the basest of all men or in that category. Uh, but the larger point clearly is that God is in control. He, he rules in heaven and that he can set up kings and remove them. Um, and this is a point that Nebuchadnezzar finally realizes for himself after this experience of, of going crazy for seven years. Um, Daniel 4, verse 26, we read this. Again, Daniel is explaining the vision here, the interpretation. And he says, Whereas they commanded to leave the stump of the tree roots, thy kingdom shall be sure unto thee. After that, thou shalt have known that the heavens do rule. It's that last phrase, of course, that we're, we're zeroing in on right now. Nebuchadnezzar had to learn that he was not in charge uh, of his kingdom, ultimately. That he was not in charge of his own life. That ultimately there is a greater, higher power in heaven. And that uh, it would be the path of wisdom and ultimately life to recognize that that power, God, um, was the one that should receive the glory in his life. Now, we've been talking the last several days uh, about the Babylonian mindset. Here's another aspect of the Babylonian mindset. The Babylonian mind, which Nebuchadnezzar was part of here at the beginning of this chapter, uh, this Babylonian mind believes or refuses to recognize that there is any power in heaven greater than humanity, greater than me. Uh, And certainly, as we look around our world today, we see this. We call it postmodernism, don't we? Uh, Whatever seems right to me is good, whatever seems right to you, but there is no absolute truth. There is no absolute uh, right or wrong. Certainly, there is no God in heaven uh, as creator that would determine these things. So we might call it postmodernism today or whatever. uh, Now they're saying we're past postmodernism whatever label we want to put on it, it's really the same mindset that Nebuchadnezzar as a Babylonian had, that uh, it was all about him and uh, everything centered on what he thought, what he wanted to do, and that it didn't matter. There's no higher power. There's no ultimately judge up in heaven that um, you know holds us accountable for what we do. It's a Babylonian mindset. Notice also that in verse 26, it says that the heavens uh, do rule, or that the heavens rule in the kingdom of men. Now, why isn't it enough to believe that God simply exists in heaven? This is the view that, that many have had of God, many s- still do have of God, um, that, yeah, okay, he exists, but he's really not connected with what's happening here on earth. He's not really connected with my life. Um, yeah, maybe he he created this world somehow, uh, but you know, I don't think that he really uh, cares what's going on in my life. And this verse, uh, these statements here in Daniel 4 remind us that is not the case. In order for God to be ruling in the affairs or the kingdoms of men, that means he's involved. He is watching what happens. He is recognizing the good and the bad and that there is a personal involvement on the part of God here. Um, it really is the difference between viewing God as an uninterested uh, initial cause that started the universe in motion or as a personal creator and savior who has invested all of himself in the welfare and salvation of humanity. Now, I don't know about you, but I'll say for me, it's much easier to trust and surrender my life to a personal God rather than an impersonal force or power or being of some kind that uh, really has no interest in me. Again, let's go to Revelation chapter 18 as we look at end-time spiritual Babylon and just remind ourselves of this attitude that is expressed by Babylon here. And it directly attacks God's sovereignty and his right to govern the affairs of humanity. Revelation chapter 18, verse 5. Her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double according to her works, in the cup which she hath filled to her double. Now here's the mindset again, verse 7. How much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her, for she hath said in her heart, I sit a queen and am no widow and shall see no sorrow. 
Here is a, a conscious decision, a choice, and this characterizes Babylon, to ignore, to forget the fact that um, God is creator, that he is ruler, and that he is involved uh, in what happens on this earth. Babylon says, uh, you're going to ignore all of that. It doesn't matter. And so again, this is part of the mindset that God is calling each one of us out of. He's calling his people out, Revelation 18.4, come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins and that you receive not of her plagues. This is a deadly mindset. Uh, and so God is calling us, because he loves us, out of this mindset. And this mindset, in many ways, really uh, captures well the condition of human, or, uh, Christianity at the end of time. Second Timothy chapter 3 begins this way. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. And we think, wow, that's a terrible list. And it is. It's not good at all. Um, But this is not describing the world at large, friends. This is describing professed Christianity. Because look at what verse 5 says. After listing all these characteristics and, and things that people will be doing at the end of time, in the last days, Verse 5 says they have a form of godliness. That means they've put on the veneer of Christianity. Uh, They claim to be Christians, but they deny the power thereof. From such, turn away. Or you could say, from such, come out. Don't be part of this mindset. What is that mindset? It's what we've been saying before, friends. Uh, Paul is saying here in 2 Timothy that in the last days, professed Christianity will um, come to this point where they can live however they wish, but they deny the power of God and his righteousness. They deny his power as judge. Uh, It's the Babylonian mindset. We can live however we want. Ultimately, it does not matter. And Paul, just like John in Revelation, he says, turn away from this. Come out from this. Don't get caught up in this mindset because... There is a God that rules in heaven, and he is involved in the affairs of men. Testimonies, volume 8, page 127, uh, shares a warning that we should all take from Nebuchadnezzar's experience here. Let men become lifted up in pride, and the Lord will not sustain them and keep them from falling. I'll read it again. Let men become lifted up in pride, and the Lord will not sustain them and keep them from falling. And then the statement goes on. Let a church become proud and boastful, not depending on God, not exalting his power, and that church will surely be left by the Lord to be brought down to the ground. Let a people glory in wealth, intellect, knowledge, or in anything but Christ, and they will soon be brought to confusion. It's the Babylonian mindset, friends. Confusion reigned in Babel be, uh, you know, as people re- rejected God and his authority, um, his involvement in their lives. Thank God, friends, we don't have to travel down that same path. We can uh, make the choice to have the mind of Christ rather than a Babylonian mind. And when we do that, He begins working in our lives when we ask him, Lord, I need a change of heart. I need a change of mind. Take me out of this uh, Babylonian mindset. Give me something better. And he says, all right, I'll do it. I've been waiting for you to ask. And he answers that prayer. Well, thanks for joining us today. I hope that you've been blessed by the time spent in God's word. Please join us again tomorrow. Deeper is a production of Pathway to Paradise Ministries. For more Bible study resources, including books, DVDs, and study guides, visit pathwaytoparadise.org or call toll-free 855-HIS-TRUTH. To support this ministry with your tax-deductible contribution, visit pathwaytoparadise.org or call toll-free 855-HIS-TRUTH. That's 855-447-8788.